Welcome back to another Kingdom Hearts 3 mod showcase. I figure through all of the showcases that I've done here on the channel, I haven't actually dedicated one to custom worlds and maps for the game. There's actually not too many of these. Most of the map mods for Kingdom Hearts 3 are simple arena swaps for the data battles. However, there are five that I definitely want to showcase here. Now, when I say custom worlds, it's not like we're getting an entirely new piece of world content in terms of enemy spawns, shops, a story scenario. Something like this still doesn't exist for Kingdom Hearts 3 mods. That being said, the Travis Town mod created by Caleb Smores and Kingdom Hearts Reawakened created by CPaz are two mods in particular that seek to be one of the firsts to actually give us a almost DLC for KH3, introducing a whole new playable world with story and things to do within it. First up, we have Beast's Castle created by Xyblade7, the literal Beast's Castle map from Kingdom Hearts 2 imported here into Kingdom Hearts. 3 with every single area of the world. Now, you'll probably notice that the lighting here in the world looks a little bit botched. Along with that, a lot of the detail in the map as well is quite polygonal. This is the result of importing a map straight from another video game, especially one from the PlayStation 2 era into a modern game engine. So the geometry of the map and lighting doesn't appear correctly. Also, if an object isn't a part of the map itself and is rather a separate asset, it means that it won't a pair hand. You'll notice that the pillars here in the ballroom are missing. This is because each of the pillars here in the ballroom are their own asset as they are interacted with for the Shadow Stalker boss fight in Beast's Castle. Still, even with the visual quirkiness going on here, it's pretty cool to see Beast's Castle in its entirety here in Kingdom Hearts 3. This world is actually within my top 10 worlds for the entire Kingdom Hearts series. Personally, I would have much preferred Beast's Castle to return for Kingdom Hearts 3 rather than Olympus for the 48th time, but Beggars cannot be choosers. Xyblade has not only imported Beast's Castle, but has also done the same for Kingdom Hearts 2's version of Halloween Town. I think out of all of the worlds that have appeared throughout Kingdom Hearts so far, I would absolutely want Halloween Town to return the most, uh, mainly because I'd love to see how this world would look within Unreal Engine and modernize, especially with the Kingdom Shader, which allows Square Enix to make worlds that have a particular art style look a little bit more stylized and convincing. Using that tool here for a Halloween Halloween Town world would be fantastic. Just because Halloween Town already has a specific kind of art style to it, we could give this world more of that Tim Burton look. And could you imagine a Square Enix were able to capture the look and the feel of stop motion by altering the frame rate, not to a point where it's uh, feeling uncomfortable to play or anything, but to just give it more of that the Nightmare Before Christmas feel. I don't know, I feel like Square Enix could do a lot with a new version of Halloween Town. The issue is here though, where do we go with the story? Uh, most of what happens throughout The Nightmare Before Christmas's narrative has already been executed within both Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. However, both Toy Story and Monsters Inc. in Kingdom Hearts 3 provided new original stories for the game, so the same could be done here for Halloween Town. Next up is Peach's Castle from Super Mario 64, created by Willow. The entire premise of Kingdom Hearts is a boy visiting different worlds, so it makes a lot of sense here to have a world from a completely different IP now visitable, and what better than one of the most iconic video game characters worlds of all time. A pretty large portion of Super Mario 64 has been imported into Kingdom Hearts 3, and it's glorious. We've got the entire exterior of the castle, the castle grounds with the warp pipe, we've even got the water, which actually works, you can dive in the water. Yoshi is nowhere to be found, though it's probably because we lack 120 stars. We can even enter the castle here, which works with an actual loading transition. And would you look at that? looks the exact same as I remember it. There's something truly odd about having a high detail character moving around within a low poly world from the late 90s. Most of the first floor of the castle is completely explorable. Even the portrait rooms, the star doors though unfortunately cannot be accessed. Even the castle courtyard is here that can be accessed out the back door of the castle. Yes, the 2D trees are unfortunately missing. Again, this is because they are separate assets to the map itself. However, what about the actual levels that you enter through the portraits? Well, yes, they're even here and it works the exact same. You simply jump into the bob -omb Battlefield portrait and you'll find yourself in the level. So we've got bob -omb Battlefield, Cool Cool Mountain, even with the slide part of the level, which uh, is actually a lot easier here in Kingdom Hearts than the actual game. Bless that. <laughs> 
Ah, oh, shit. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Oh my god, I... <laughs> I have just torn apart a family. Womp's Fortress, Jolly Roger Bay, and Big Boo's Horn. Now, there's nothing within the levels themselves. You're not gonna be running around collecting gold and rage coins, stomping on Goombas, or bullying a Chain Chomp. The levels are empty, along with all of the assets, interactables, and entities. However, at the end of each level, there is actually a star, and if you touch it, it'll teleport you back to Peach's Castle. Really, these custom maps are more of a proof of concept that, hey, we can take already pre-existing levels from other video games and chuck them into Kingdom Hearts 3. However, I believe the process of that isn't as straightforward as just ripping one file from one folder and dragging it into another. This has to be put through Unreal Engine and then Collision needs to be added so that the character isn't falling through the map. If you have the CMOD menu mod installed, you can actually use these custom areas to fight Heartless or bosses. Now we all know that Sora is an island boy, so why don't we take him over to Woohoo Island from Wii Sports Resort created by Darlin. The entirety of Woohoo Island is here in the game and it's massive. Yeah, this is probably the biggest map I've seen for Cage 3. If you're sad about Square Enix not allowing us to explore and go back to Destiny Islands in the game, then don't worry, Darlin's got you, man. We've got a beautiful island to explore right here with plenty of amenities and different activities to engage in. Though uh, it's, yeah, a little bit deader looking than I last remember it. The colors being a little bit sad. The trees are missing. Uh, I don't see anyone here at all. Woohoo Island. Has the darkness taken you? So yeah, without the water moving, the turbines spinning, the balloons up in the air, people driving around the resort, there is this really airy, spooky feeling going on. I feel like Sora's being transported to a creepy pasta rendition of Woohoo Island. Darlin even went to the trouble of making some of the terrain of the level uh, scalable, so you can actually wall run up some of the walls. And even different points of the map have the air step square, like the boys sitting here in the water. Now traditionally, the quickest way around Woohoo Island would be either via a balloon, a bike, or of course, a car. Unfortunately, we are facing the Great Rapture here, so everyone and everything has disappeared. However, at our disposal, we do have a Gigas in our back pocket. Headed on down to the tennis courts, desperate to smack a few rounds with someone. Unfortunately, again, everyone's kind of dead. However, I sent a quick DM to Luxor to see if he was interested, and he, he pretty much just came down and started to try and murder me. What are you doing, bro? I just want to play a Jeez quick game Christ. of tennis! Is something going on at home that I should know about? Are you okay? Have I offended you somehow? What are you doing? Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? A 16-year-old boy from Disney's Kingdom Hearts, that's who. Bikini Bottom, created by by Jaxley. Sora somehow managed to get his hands on the interdimensional TV remote and switch channels from Disney Channel to Nickelodeon. Yeah, it would seem as if the Rapture has also made its way to Bikini Bottom as well. There's not a great deal going on here. We got some rocks, some rocks, some Rocks, the Krusty Krab, the Chum Bucket, Squidward, Patrick, and SpongeBob's house, Jellyfish Fields. Apparently this map has been imported from one of the SpongeBob games, but exactly what one, I have no idea. It's definitely not Battle for Bikini Bottom. I'm thinking potentially one of the old PC games, like Employee of the Month. One thing that I noticed while I was hanging around the streets of Bikini Bottom is the Heartless are here too. Like Nickelodeon are in desperate need of an anime character that goes from one world to another because, like, uh, these motherfuckers are out here dying. Oh god, someone help! My eyes! Ah! I'm being swallowed! Yeah! Someone call the exterminator! Ah! So that right there is five custom world maps for Kingdom Hearts 3. As always, the mod links are in the description down below, just in case you guys wanted to explore these for yourself. Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Check out my other garbage social media platforms. A big thank you to my wonderful patrons. I hope you're all having a fantastic day, and we'll talk real soon.